All right, let's go and talk about the least common denominator, what it is and how to find it. Now, one of the ways we're gonna use the least common denominator is when we want to add and subtract fractions. So you can see in this first example, I have one third plus one fourth. Now to combine these two fractions or really to apply addition or subtraction, I need to make sure that the denominators are exactly the same. So we're gonna to wanna to find the least common denominator, which is going to be the least common multiple of three and four. A lot of times we just call that the least common multiple. That means the smallest number that three and four evenly divide into. So when you're first starting out, it might be helpful just to start listing the multiples of three and four, our two denominators, and see what they have in common. So we can just go ahead and do that. We can create a list here. I can say three, six, nine, 12, 15. And you can just kind of keep on going down with that pattern. Then I can do that same thing with four. Just list all the multiples, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, right? But hopefully, once you kind of notice that once you write the same number, that is the smallest multiple that they have in common. In this case, it's going to be 12. So 12 is gonna be our smallest number that three and four divide into. So that's what we call our least common multiple. In this case, since they're dealing with the denominators, you can also refer to them as your least common denominator or your LCD. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll list this as LCD equals 12, all right? So now, again, to obtain common denominators for adding and subtracting fractions, we need to, um, we need to, multi we need to figure out what do I need to multiply three by to get to 12, and what do I need to multiply four by to get to 12? And hopefully you recognize that I just need to multiply by four and by three. Now it's very important that you just don't multiply those numbers in the denominator because if you do, then you're gonna change the value of the fraction, right? So what we need to do is we need to multiply that same value in the numerator and the denominator. What that's gonna do is produce equivalent equations. So therefore I have a 4 twelfths plus 3 twelfths, which is now going to give me a 7 twelfths. All right, so one of the kind of tricks that we like to look at was we want to identify the common denominator. If they don't have anything in common or any factors in common, do you see how the three and the four do not have any factors in common? You can simply just multiply them, right? Because 12 was three times four, okay? So that's gonna work any single time that they don't have any factors in common. Just multiply your two denominators and that, that's how you find the LCD. However, be careful. We don't wanna always just go with, let's find the LCD to equal 12, right? Just multiply them. Because do these have a factor in common? And actually, if you factor six, if you write this down as a prime factors, this can be broken down into two times three. So now what you can see is they actually have a two in common. They have a common factor of two. So therefore, the LCD is not going to be 12. The LCD is going to be two, which they share, but then we have to include here, which is going to be a three. Well, two times three is equal to six. All right, now, since we already have a one over six over here, the only thing I need to do to obtain a common denominator is multiply this fraction by a three over three. So when I do that, I get a three over three, then now I get a three over six plus a one over six, which equals a seven over six, okay? Now, that's the relative process when we're dealing with numbers. And usually with a little bit of practice, students feel fairly comfortable understanding the common denominator, how to obtain it, and kind of practice. I'm practicing with that. Then, once we get into variable expressions or algebraic expressions, everything kind of seems to go out the window. So again, I'm going to remind you of the two kind of processes or the two techniques we just used. If our two denominators do not have anything in common, we can find our common denominator by multiplying our products. If they do have a factor in common, then we don't need to, re we can just go ahead and keep that. We don't need to multiply them, all right? So if we look at this last one, a lot of students will look at this and they say, well, I know the three and four don't have anything in common, but what about the X? Don't they have an X in common? And yes, they do have an X in common in terms of their expression, but they don't have the factor X in common. And what I mean is X does not evenly divide into X plus three, nor does it evenly divide into X plus four. If you recall doing long division, X divides into X one times, one times X, you subtract the rows, and then three, X does not, do, there's, X does not divide into three, that's a remainder. So it doesn't evenly divide. So they actually do not share any factors. Here, they share the factor of two. These do not share any factors. So then we go into, well, could you list the multiples? And it's like, like I can list the multiples with numbers, but the listing the multiples of variables or algebraic expressions, that kind of seems pretty complicated. So again, we can just go directly to our point. If they don't share a common factor, let's just multiply them. So in this case, my LCD 
is going to be just the product of x plus 3 times x plus 4. To make my life a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is simply just keep them in factored form. Don't actually distribute them. So if I need to get this product, and I already have an x plus 3, then I'm going to multiply by an x plus 4 on the left over an x plus 4. Over here, I'll multiply by an x plus 3 over an x plus 3. Now I have a x plus 4 over my common factor x plus 4 times x plus 3, and then plus a x plus 3 over the common factor of x plus 3 times the x plus 4. Now you can see that they have the same denominators. Now I can go ahead and combine my numerators and just rewrite them over the common denominator, which in this case is going to equal a 2x plus 7 all over a x plus 4 times an x plus 3. Okay. All right. Now let's go and look at our last example. Now in our last example, a lot of times, again, people will look at this and they say, well, they don't have anything in common, so let's go ahead and multiply them. And I think once you get to this point, you realize I don't really want to multiply these two by each other to get my LCD, because that kind of seems pretty confusing. So one thing we always want to look into is simplifying, simplifying, simplifying. And we recognize this is a quadratic trinomial. We can probably simplify this by factoring if it is factorable. And thankfully, it is factorable. What two numbers multiply to give me 12? but add to give me 8, well, I recognize that to be an x plus 2 times an x plus 6. So I can rewrite this in the factored form. Now, just like the problem above, you can see that they share the x plus 2s in common. So therefore, to obtain the LCD, all I simply need to do is multiply by a x plus 6 over an x plus 6. So now I obtain, now again, here's the other thing too that we can kind of simplify this. Rather than rewriting these as the two denominators, could I just write these, since they have the same denominators, could I just write my numerator all over my common denominator, right? And you could probably simplify this in your, in your head. You probably didn't need to write that out. But hopefully you can see now I can rewrite this as x plus 7 all over a x plus 6 times a x plus 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you identify and label your LCD to use for adding and subtracting um, fractions. Hopefully you enjoyed and look forward to seeing you on the next video. Feel free to join my other playlist that will help you add and subtract fractions. Cheers.